All right, friends, this Sunday is the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and there are only 34 Sundays in Ordinary Time in the whole liturgical year. So you know what that means, uh, four more weeks until New Year's. And uh, moms and dads, uh, that means that uh, there's only eight or nine weeks until Christmas, 10 weeks, something like that. And with the supply chain as it is, uh, we may want to uh, make that call to Santa Claus soon. So. Anyway, 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the church begins to look towards the end, not just the end of the year, but uses this um, end of the year as an opportunity to look at what's going to happen at the end of time and uh, what the scriptures tell us about what's going to happen in the end times. Uh, is that God is going to bring back the exiles who have been scattered throughout uh, not just the uh, Roman Empire, but throughout the entire world. And one of the signs of that um, really is in the, the healing of the blind and the lame. We've talked about this uh, other weeks of the year as Jesus uh, performs particular healings and particular miracles. But in our first reading today, we hear it from the prophet uh, Jeremiah that God is going to uh, gather in uh, the blind and the lame. It kind of reminds you of that uh, that song, Gather Us In, right? That's why I'm at the doors of the church, to remind you that that hymn isn't just about you can get them off the streets and bring them into the doors of the church. No, that's about God gathering the scattered into his fold, right? Into, into uh, his flock, right? Um, it's about binding up the lost and opening their eyes to see with eyes of faith uh, the truth of who Jesus is. So at the end of time, there's this sense of God gathering in um, those who are unable to walk in faith, those who are unable to see with the eyes of faith. And so when we get to the gospel reading, you know, we have a particular um, account uh, of Jesus healing a blind man. And this is one of the more famous uh, healings of, of a blind man. And, uh, in the Gospels, it's Bartimaeus. You know, and one of the unique things about this is it kind of highlights uh, the need for individuals to make a, a personal response of faith, and maybe even a bit deeper. You know, to name for God what it is that they desire. Right? And I think really when you get into the spiritual life, you know, you you recognize that I have to be able to name what I want God to do for me. And it's not like He's holding me hostage until I'm able to do it, but. Um, we can't ask. We can't ask rightly if we don't, you know, understand what we desire. And Bartimaeus says so plainly, "I desire to see." You know, and that really, in so many ways, ought to be our prayer to the Lord as well. Bartimaeus helps name for us one of the things that we need to be asking the Lord for. Jesus says, "What do you want me to do for you?" Well, what is our response? Certainly to see clearly with the eyes of faith, uh, but in other areas of your life too. I think it's an invitation um, for you to really reflect on what do you want God to do for you? You know, not just solving the problems of your life, but really in the depth of your relationship with God. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Where are you in need of greater healing in your heart, in your mind, in your soul? You know, um, how do you want to grow in your relationship with Jesus? How do you want to grow in your relationship with other people? You know, in, in turning yourself outward and, um, and, and, you know, being able to provide more uh, for other people, simply in relationship and maybe even in, uh, in, the, in the goods of the earth. But Jesus asked Bartimaeus, just as he asks you this week, what do you want me to do for you? How do you respond?